What's up YouTube? So a few years ago I had uploaded a video about a $120 pool heater that I built and at the time I didn't really put that much effort into it. I was just trying to build something that was cheap, simple, and easy to construct. And it worked okay, but it didn't really heat the pool as fast as I would have liked. So I have since built a new setup that can heat the water much faster at a little over one degree Fahrenheit per hour. In terms of DIY pool heaters, I really don't see a better design out there. I've seen all these designs on YouTube, such as these cheap trash bag lily pads, putting a radiator in a bonfire, irrigation tube solar heaters, and people using about 10 feet of coil. These designs will never heat a 12,000 gallon pool. If you watch a lot of those videos, you'll see that the water is hardly trickling into the pool at probably one gallon per minute or less. In order to heat 12,000 gallons, you need to add very hot water at a very high flow rate. And the only way to achieve that is to put a very long coil into a very hot heat source such as a bonfire. So in this video, I'll run through the new heat exchanger that I built, the new flow diverter that I built, and how to hook all this up into your existing pool circuit without the need of an additional pump. And then lastly, I'll discuss the results and performance of the heat exchanger and how well it did heating my pool. First, I'll run you through the new heat exchanger that I built. You'll need to purchase a 55 gallon steel drum, also known as a burn barrel. These are available locally on Craigslist for between $20 and $40, and I would highly recommend that you get a used one because they're about $100 new. You'll also need to purchase a 100 foot long stainless steel coil with one half inch outer diameter. These are available on nybrewsupply.com for $160. And lastly, you'll need to purchase some clamps for one half inch tubing and the hardware to mount it. For step one, you first need to verify the inside diameter of your barrel. This should be a standard 24 inches for all 55 gallon steel drums. And what I did is I drilled a one inch hole through one side of the barrel at the very bottom. For step two, we need to verify the size of our coil to make sure that it'll fit inside of the barrel. Before building this, I contacted NY Brew Supply and they said that these come at about 24 inches. Mine came in at 21 and a half inches. So I'm guessing yours will be somewhere in that 20 to 24 inch range and it should fit right inside of the barrel. The only modification I made is I unbent one leg of the coil approximately 18 inches. For step three, we need to drop the coil down inside of the barrel and feed the straight leg through the hole that we drilled. If you're having trouble doing this, I would recommend that you cut a slot going down the full height of the barrel so that you can just drop the coil right inside. And you may need to cover this up later with something just so that the burning material inside of the barrel doesn't fall out. Step four is probably the most difficult step. What I did is I spaced the coil out going up the full height of the barrel and I mounted it to the inside wall of the barrel using those half saddle clamps. And the reason this is a difficult step is because you don't really know ahead of time where to drill the holes for those clamps. So you need to place the coil inside the barrel, space it out with some tape or something and mark the hole locations, then take the coil out, drill all the holes and put it back in and mount it using the clamps. And for this step, I just mounted the coil about 80% of the way up the barrel and left some slack up top because in step five, we need to unbend the top leg of the coil. And in my case, I wanted the top leg and the bottom leg to both be pointing in the same direction. And you won't really know how long that top leg will end up being once you get it unbent in the direction that you want it. So don't worry about the length for now, just unbend it in the direction that you want it. Finish mounting the coil to the inside of the barrel using the clamps and then you can trim the top leg to the length that you want it afterwards. For step six, you just need to drill approximately 30 holes going all around the barrel just so that the fire can get some oxygen. And just make sure that when you're doing this, you don't hit the coil with the drill and cause any damage. So once it's all assembled, it'll look something like what I have shown on the screen here. On the right, I show the transparent barrel and you can see that the coil is spiraling all the way up the inside and there's one straight leg on bottom and one straight leg on top for the hose connections. Real quick, I just wanna show what this looks like when it's all assembled. You can see that I have the coil spiraling all the way up the inside of the barrel. I have holes drilled all around to let oxygen in. I have clamps securing the coil to the inside wall of the barrel. I even added handles on the sides of the barrel to make it easier to move around. And on the bottom, you can see the straight leg is coming through the hole in the barrel. To build the diverter, you'll start by purchasing a length of one and a half inch PVC pipe 
and cut it into three small pieces as I have labeled here. You will also need a Y fitting and a PVC ball valve. You will glue all of this together so that it looks like what I have shown. The orientation doesn't matter, you can do it whichever way works best for your setup, but just make sure that the ball valve comes after the Y fitting in the direction of flow, and also make sure that the leg of the Y fitting is oriented in the direction that makes sense for flow. Coming out of the Y fitting, you will glue in a reducing bushing and thread together some brass components to get you all the way to a garden hose connection. Make sure to orient the ball valve handle away from the bushing so it won't interfere when trying to turn it. To finish off the diverter, we need to be able to connect it to our pool hoses. And in order to do that for mine, I first needed to cut a small length of one and a half inch tube. I secured this to the length of PVC on the ends of the diverter using a flexible reducing coupling. I then attached my pool hose over top of the tube using an additional band clamp. Your pool connections may be threaded or maybe something different, so just be aware and purchase what works for you and modify what I have discussed accordingly. To hook this up, first close both of the ball valves on the diverter. Next, turn your pool pump off and disconnect the return line from your filter. I purchased a nice short hose that would go right from the filter to my diverter without any extra slack. So I first connected that to the filter and then to the diverter. And lastly, I connected my original return hose to the far end of the diverter and that goes back to my pool. So all we've done is we've sort of just extended our return line and added the diverter in the middle of it. So if I turn my pool pump back on and I open the PVC ball valve and I close the brass ball valve, you'll see that the water flows through one leg when I want to connect the heat exchanger, I simply open the brass ball valve. If I only want a small portion of water going through the pool heater, I can partially close off the brass ball valve. If I want more flow going through the heater, I simply open the brass ball valve all the way and I partially close off the PVC ball valve. That's what makes this design so great is you never have to disconnect it from your pool circuit. All you have to do is close the one ball valve. So if you're going to build a flow diverter for your pool, build it like this. It's a one-time install and it gives you all the controls that you need. One final thing to mention is that I have my diverter laying in my yard. In order to keep the garden hose threads clean and keep dirt and other elements out of the fittings, I thread on a spare garden hose adapter with a rubber cap for whenever I'm not using it. Okay, so I now have the heat exchanger fully assembled and my diverter is fully integrated into my existing pool circuit and I am ready to connect the heat exchanger and start heating the pool. Real quick, I just wanted to show the circuit of what's going on here. All we are doing is we are taking a portion of the return water and sending it through the heat exchanger so that it returns as hot water. We won't be adding or subtracting any water from the pool. So to hook up the heat exchanger, I first lay down some 2x4s in the yard to help protect the grass from burning. I place the heater in a location where the hoses and tubes will reach. You will start by connecting the female end of the garden hose to the diverter. You will route the garden hose through the yard and then connect it to the bottom leg of the coil. For this connection you will need an adapter that goes to 1/2 inch barbs and you will slide on a short piece of clear vinyl tubing over the adapter and the bottom leg of the coil. In my case, I also used band clamps to ensure that there were no leaks. For the top leg of the coil, I just have a tube connected using a small band clamp, and I route this straight over to the pool. After everything is connected, you can open the brass ball valve, and you will now have flow going through the coil and into the pool. After verifying that there are no leaks and that everything is working properly, you are ready to start a bonfire and heat your pool. So I figured I would end this video by showing you how not to run your pool heater. What you don't want to do is you do not want to start the bonfire before you have water flowing. If you do that, you'll end up heating up the coil red hot and then as soon as you turn the water on, it'll hit that coil and immediately turn into steam. We know that when water turns into steam, it expands 1600 times in volume. So what ends up happening is that steam shoots out the end of the tube and everything is very turbulent. And I'll let you take a look at what that looks like.
What ended up happening is the tube went back and forth in the pool shooting out steam for roughly a minute and then all of a sudden the tube that links the garden hose to the coil blew up. I thought eventually that the water would catch up, but that coil is just so hot that the water going in cannot cool it off and it just continuously pumps out steam until it eventually blows up somewhere. So just make sure that you always have water flowing through the coil before you ever start your bonfire or else that coil will heat up and this will happen to you. Alright guys, thanks for watching part one of the ultimate DIY pool heater. I hope this video was informative enough for you to try to construct this yourself. Please be sure to like, share, and subscribe and check out part two where I discuss the performance of the heat exchanger, how well it was able to heat my pool, and a full parts list and cost breakdown for this project.